We are live. Welcome to LinkedIn Sites with Jeffrey Klein. I'm super excited about my guest today because she is just a wonderful person, brings incredible content, other people together, is a great connector, and just does good in the world. And so there you go. Nicole, how are you? Thank you. That is such a nice introduction. I'm doing really well. Very busy. Very busy right now, but good. Well, I didn't, I try not to say too much about what you actually do because I want to leave you to do that. Um, okay. Because I'm sure you'll do it better than I will, even though I know all the amazing things that you're doing. So I've got nine questions for you and we'll start with a really easy one. So who are you and what do you do? Okay. So I am obviously Nicole Stevenson. I do many things in my mm-hmm. life. Um, my full-time career and job at this moment is the executive director of the Society of Professional Women program at the Mainline Chamber of Commerce, which is more than just a job to me and has just sparked so many other things that I do, like sitting on nonprofit boards for Girls Spark, which is a teen organization that helps teen girls. I'm on the board of Big Brothers Big Sisters, the Delaware County Regional Advisory Board, um, because I believe in youth mentorship so much. Um, and then, of course, I am a delegate in the state of Pennsylvania for Vision Forward, which is an advocacy for women and and voting. Um, And then of course, you know, obviously I started my own company during the pandemic called College Cast, where I'm the chief people officer and co-founder. So a lot going on. Uh, And you're a mother. Don't forget that part. I am a mother. Come on. Um, (laughs) But what I do in each of those roles and it's interesting because you could say, what do you do? And I could break it down. And, you know, you're supposed to have this elevator pitch together that's mm-hmm. like, and this is what I do. I do sales. I do event management. I do this. But for me, I am me in all of those roles. And my mm-hmm. main goal in all of those roles is to connect with people, find out what I can help them with, and collaborate with them to achieve success in any part of their life, whether that be personally, individually, company scale. Like, so when people say, what do you do? I like to say, I I help people, right? I I inspire people. I help people. I empower people to advocate for themselves and try to help them find solutions. See, I would, I think a good way of describing that is I'll take a a phrase out of something I use often, which is you help connect the dots. See, that's what you do. (laughs) That's yours. Oh yeah, that's right. We can share. We can share. Kind of. I mean, Um, I'm not doing that. But I, you know, helping people is so important, and I think again, it's become more important in terms of what we do now. People are, you know, expecting it. But I think the thing that's important to note is that it's genuine, and that you it comes from, you know, anyone who meets you knows that you 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 have passion and you really care about helping people in all these different hats that you wear. Um, and in terms of the main kind of help, what's the main kind of problem or uh, that you kind of help people solve? What is it that they're you're know, like? You see something and you're like, okay, this is a problem that this organization or this individual has, and this is how we help solve it. I'm going to say, I don't really like or enjoy the term problem. I like to look at challenge. it as a challenge. Exactly. Okay. Right. So I like I'm going to change that. Because, and this is the other part. I'm not solving the problem or the challenge. I'm providing tools and resources so that people can solve the problem on their own right? Because technically you can, what do they say, lead a horse to water and you can't make a drink and you put them on a bicycle. Like there's so many different euphemisms that kind of demonstrate that. Mm -hmm. Like you can only take people so far, but they're not going to address the problem if they don't have appropriate resources and tools and you can't solve things for them, right? So that's kind of what challenges do I help them with? It's that piece, the tools Mm -hmm. and the resources. So being Listener. So you do solve you do solve a challenge, which is they don't have the, the the tools and the resources to help them be better at what they do. So you provide them for them. Right, and that and that's done through many different things, mainly education, professional mm-hmm. development content, introductions to individuals, you know, things like that. And <clears throat> so you know, in the sales marketing speak, we, we you know it's always important to think about who your avatar is or your ideal customer or client, who's who's a perfect person, who, who's that kind of uh, an ideal person that you would want to know that you have all these resources and tools to be able to help them with? Um, there is nothing that drives me more crazy than when we have amazing speakers or incredible content or topics, and we're not reaching 
everyone everyone in the world. <laughs> like I, it drives Global me nuts. Right, I, I, I don't say everyone is a client of mine, but honestly, like it just drives me crazy when we have such really important things that, that are going on in our community and we have these expert topics and, you know, I know COVID has obviously provided other challenges and we do offer things virtually, luckily, um, during the pandemic, but, you know, we used to have two or 300 people at events and now it's like 50. So, you know, we will send a virtual link out, but when we have a really amazing speaker talking about something important, like neurodiversity in the workplace, for example, that's coming up next week, like, those are things that are really going to impact our community in a big way and not just the community, but make a lasting imprint on our economy and our region. And so for me, that's a challenge. So my ideal customer or client are people that want to engage and learn and improve and maybe have challenges and are looking for tools and resources. They're looking for community. They're looking for networking. They're looking for collaboration. And that could go from the individual, like some of our members at the chamber, for example, are consultants, some are realtors, some are independent contractors, some are lawyers or attorneys on their own. And then you have the large scale companies, which obviously have over 500 employees. And how do you serve an individual and then a company and still be able to give them a sa the same result, right? Like they're mm -hmm. obviously gonna have very different needs. That's why I love the program in particular that I lead because we offer many different things to people mm -hmm. with those tools and resources. Now, there is something about your part within the, the chamber, which is the Society of Professional Women. And some people that are not women may think, oh wait, this isn't for me because it's for women. How do you how do you address that both in terms of a perception and then about what, what if I'm a man, I say, is this for me? Right. So SBW was actually born out of the need to have men and women working together. So while our mission is very much focused on enhancing and expanding the influence of women in the workplace, nonprofit and government sectors, we need um, men to kind of champion that cause as well. So we're mission driven. However, we invite everyone. And being that SBW was created over a decade ago, our programming has very much evolved into focusing on other diversity initiatives as well, because we have the platform. We've had a time management expert. I mean, time management is not gender exclusive, right? So really it has developed into a very comprehensive program with multiple layers, with a lot of professional development tools for anyone and everyone with this mission behind it. So it's mission driven, but the content is not solely focused on gender. Yeah, and I actually go to a, a variety, including the SPW, but other women, quote unquote, women events and things because, a, I want to support women, you know, generally, but also I have daughters, I have a mother, I have a wife, so you know, whatever you are, you, you there's a woman in your life that's important, hopefully, um, that you want to support, and and you have to work with every lots of diversity, as you said. So I think it's important to have inclusivity. And, but but also to champion certain things that sometimes don't get the opportunities because of the way things have been historically and otherwise. So I, I, I love that, that it's mission driven, but you know, welcoming all. Um, Absolutely. It's kind of sounds good. Um, okay, I have uh, another question. So it, can you name, you know, I'm a big fan of, of business books and podcasts. Um, and then you know, I know you have uh, this, you've been doing some podcast stuff. Um, can you name a favorite book or podcast that you think is worth the time of either reading or listening to? Yes. So <clears throat> just to make things simpler, because I have so many books, <laughs> it's ridiculous. I read, I'm an avid book reader, especially for our, for our speakers. I'm going to just mention the book that changed my life because ultimately I feel like I always give credit to Adam Grant for that. So mm. Adam Grant, his very first book, Give and Take, just taught me a lot. I was very green in my career, so I think maybe it depends on where you are um, in your life, but he also has, has a podcast. Which is awesome. Um, I've listened to it. Right and it's, life. And they're yeah. very short, and so I just will keep it as one person. Adam Grant, he's a genius. He has multiple books now. He has a really good book. He partnered with Cheryl Sandberg called Plan B about grief um, and um, the originals. I mean, he has mm -hmm. a bunch of books now. Yeah, um, I, I will second. Yeah. Yeah, second Adam Grant being a genius. Uh, I love that he's in Philadelphia, where we're from, because yeah. uh, we can call him our own, I guess. But um, right. 
Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he he's I've seen him speak and he's he's just and, phenomenal. And um, you know, the other thing I really love about Adam is that he is genuinely the the person he says he is in his book and mm -hmm. give and take when he talks about giving to people. I've reached out to him personally a few times um, since I read his book and he has always, you know, tried to deliver a favor. And if he couldn't, he would introduce me to someone else. Like he would, he is very genuine. Yeah. It's, it's amazing as he's kind of uh, skyrocketed because he, uh, you know, in the last 10 years, he, he was you know, not much, I shouldn't say not much. <laughs> he was as well known, um, yeah. not much in terms of his, you know, uh, being known and now yeah. he's yeah 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 he's he's blown up and and it's clear as you listen to his podcast and you that he's the same guy and he's the same person and and really uh that's good to, i don't know him but uh, but that's why his reputation is exactly that he's an incredible person who really again like you're saying has has passion for what he does and when you have that genuine i think that's really important no matter what you're doing i don't care what it is you like as long as you're doing it with your heart and and, and passion behind it i think it's it's really powerful Mm -hmm. um, all right, let's go. So that's the individual almost kind of. Let's go to kind of more organization. So thinking about a brand, can you name a brand you admire and, and why? Yeah, I'm not, I was, <laughs> I'm thinking about this because I'm like, I do have a brand and it might sound strange, but Costco. All right. I'm a big Costco fan. So go. And I don't know if you need elaboration, but it's interesting because I was just in a certification program for the U.S. Chamber Foundation called Institute of Organizational Management. And they had asked about customers. We were doing a whole session on customer service, and they were someone I used in that demonstration because I, they just have an unbelievable customer service policy and like also high quality things in their store. I mean, half my house is furnished by Costco. My friends all have like a running joke about it. So while I think there are definitely other brands, um, I'm going to just use Costco for the sake of time. <laughs> I, I love that because it's not one that people immediately think about. And a lot of people are using them. Um, and I've been a Costco member for decades. Um, and again, the consistency, I've been a Costco member here in LA, in England, and there's consistency. And I love when there's brands that do that. That's, that's to me, the strength of a really good brand that no matter where you interact with them geographically or wherever you get the same mm -hmm. customer service, you get the same brand experience. And I think that's, that's really a good mark of, of a really good brand. Okay. So now here's a sometimes a harder one. Name a LinkedIn connection you're glad you have. That's not me, because some people want to just say me. Um, someone else. Who, well, I, I'm off. glad I have you. Uh, but but so who who is it? Who can we who can we give a shout out to? You know, I'm gonna shout out a more recent connection of mine, and I'm gonna tell you why, because obviously I have thousands of connections and a lot of dear friends that I'm connected to. But I will say and shout out as a thank you, Gregory Jerome from Gregory Jerome Image Consulting. He reached out to me. We both connected on LinkedIn probably about a month or two months ago. And, you know, it's, it's interesting when people connect on LinkedIn, how they do it, right? Mm -hmm. Like sometimes it's, here's my product service and it's very like transactional. Sometimes it's like, hey, I read this about you and I want to learn more. Can we have a meeting? Some people have time for meetings. I always try to make this make that happen. I'm not super popular enough yet to, to turn people away yet, I guess. But um, it's interesting because you're just only a few things away from that. Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 no. <laughs> but it, it's so weird because Gregory and I, when we were done our conversation, which was purely just to get to know one another, he immediately connected me with two other people. And then, and this is really, I mean, I guess I've had a few of these happen before, but honestly, I am like almost overwhelmed. So like I had a call with those two people and mm -hmm. then the next person sent me two people. And then the next, and it's almost like I'm overwhelmed now. Like I was just saying where it's like, Ooh, I don't know how many more calls I could take. And the <laughs> odd part is, and it's not that I don't want to do business with people nationally or internationally, but some of these people have been from Georgia, from California. And I'm like, is this the best use of my time? But I'm loving getting to know these people. But the odd thing is the person in California introduced me to someone here. So like, it's really been crucial, <laughs> but it's just interesting because I've never met a group of people that want to help so much. So I immediately emailed mm. them and I'm like, your network is so friendly and generous and like want to really connect. Like everyone wants to talk all the time. It's amazing. So I'm going to give him a shout out for being a good LinkedIn connection because it's, it's really I, nice when you have a connection that just wants to meet you. 
Yeah, I think it's so important, and, I, and I'm sure you as, as well as many, including myself, get the, hey, let's connect. And then as soon as you connect, it's like the bait and switch, and it's like connect, hey, here's my program, here's my product, here's my service, please. Yeah, and it's horrible. And so um, to the point where I, as some others, have drafted a response saying, thanks so much for the connection. I'm not sure I'll be interested in what you have to serve, but if I can be of service to you or you just want to get to know – Right. LinkedIn, like any other kind of networking, is about building relationships, not this or that. And I think that's right. – everyone should know this by now. I mean, but for whatever <laughs> reason, people um, aren't as uh, elevated and, and um, enhanced as, as I think they could I mean, be on using LinkedIn. It's also not a dating site. You think people would know that by now, but <laughs> – uh, I haven't had that problem, thankfully. I think I'm, I'm, I, I, I mention my wife every now and again, so, so hopefully people know, uh, or maybe I'm just not that um, appealing to people. I don't know. Anyway, yes, it is not a dating site. And, you know, but I do think, I just want to tap into one thing, which is it doesn't mean you can't have personal, share personal things. And I think that's one thing that, you know, there, I've seen the debates and you know, what people are saying, I don't want to see pictures of your kids. Or I don't want, and, and I guess it depends in the context of why you're sharing that. I was going to um, say, I, I've posted a picture of my child, but I, it's very much context driven and it's not like every day and it's not like, you no. know, it, and it does actually, usually when I post about her, it does have to do with a professional connection. Correct. I agree. If there's, if there's a link to something professional, because it's a professional. Story or a learned lesson that could yes. benefit people at work, especially when we're normalizing, introducing ourselves and saying, hey, I'm a mom or I'm a dad. You know, like you corrected me in the beginning, like, don't forget your mom. That's like, and trust me, that's probably the biggest piece of what I do. Um, but it's, it's to normalize that. I think that LinkedIn does have to bring down that barrier a little bit. In I'm, not, right. I'm not saying it should become Facebook yeah. or Instagram. No, I you know, know. It, it's within the, the professional context. You mm -hmm. want to share who you are. And one of the things that I like that you said was, no matter whether you're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this, you're you. And I've heard conversations about like, you know, oh, do I have to be a certain way on LinkedIn and not a certain way on, on Instagram? And uh, there was a post the other day of someone who changed their profile picture, who showed their tattoos and showed their, you know, their nose piercing and was like, this is who I am. This doesn't mean I'm not professional. This is just right. the way I express myself. And I think um, the kind of professional uh, etiquette police sometimes over <laughs> over step their bounds and like come on people we're just we're all people here um and what's important is we all have favorite colors no one knows my favorite color i hide it very well i never post my favorite okay everyone knows my favorite color is purple well you only need a, a second or two to be near me and you'll know that i am uh, a little obsessed with purple so what is your favorite color so you're honestly gonna think i'm kissing up now but honestly my favorite color is purple and it has been since like around seventh grade. And I know sixth grade, my favorite color was teal because I had a bedroom that was teal and purple and pro probably would blind you if you walked in there. Um, so yes, purple is my favorite color. But for the sake of not being boring, I will share my husband's favorite color, which is interesting. And that's why I'll share it. Okay. And my niece used to yell at him because when she was like four years old, she would say, what's your favorite color, Aunt Nicole? And I would say purple and she would get all excited. And then she'd say, Uncle Tim, what's your favorite color? And he would say white <laughs> and it would drive her nuts because for children they don't think white's the color right like they want yeah, i thought white was the absence of color someone it, once said exactly I and so my husband's an artist and so he likes the clean palette uh, argument but i also think he was just trying to try to drive kids nuts but i just think that's funny because i agree that i don't hear people say white is their favorite color very often wow so. i like it I like yeah. it. And I think it's important from a design perspective, not that I'm design the white space. So you know, you need the you need the white to appreciate all the others. You know, exactly colors. his argument. He's like, I need all right. yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm willing to accept that. Um okay, so I, I'm also you know passionate about animated videos and, and there have been some amazing ones. So um if you were gonna create an animated video for SPW. What would you want the viewer to remember most about SPW? Um, I'd want them to remember how it makes them feel. And I know that's very touchy-feely for business, but that's what I hear the most when I'm actually hearing about the impact. And sometimes I hear it right away. Sometimes I hear it three years later, and it's like, why didn't I know this? Why didn't you share this? But like the testimonials that people give 
about how it made them feel. And I say that because it's not like just the lovey-dovey feel, which sometimes when we had, for example, we had Loriana Hernandez speak the other week about her cancer journey and there wasn't a dry eye in the place. And we don't always have fluff content like that, but it was important because she was talking about putting your health first, especially in the climate of COVID and how people are working 24 hours a day and just burning themselves out. But anyway, um, not just like, oh, how I feel like warm inside, but the motivation that you feel, the inspiration that you feel to achieve your goals, things like that. So for me, it's about how we make you feel, whether that make you feel inspired to go after something new, to go after that promotion, or hey, maybe you went back to school. Like when we had Nikki Johnston Houston, who was formerly homeless, but then became one of the top attorneys in Philadelphia. You know, that inspired apparently someone to go back and get their degree. They were a single mother. Mm. They didn't go get their degree. And even though they were successful in their career, they always had it like looming over their head and their parents and their family members were like, oh, blah, blah, when are you going to finish? When are you going to finish? And she just didn't feel like she needed to. Right. And then she heard that talk and was like, well, darn, if Nikki can do it, I can do it. She went back, got her degree. And then she went to this company that I visited and she was like, oh, I know all about SPW. You changed my life. And I'm like, what? Like, good. This is a great scale. You can do it for me. Right? Like, no, but that's the truth. Like whatever our event brought to her made her feel like she could mm -hmm. accomplish anything. And that is really powerful. So it's not even me in the animation mm -hmm. or my company. It's like, I want others to tell the story because that's well, how that's, much that's transformational cool. impact we've made. I love that. And there's two things that, that made me think of. So you know, being a brand person, when I think about, you know, what is the goal of a brand and all the rest of it. And when you think of brand experience or customer experience, that's all it is. You know, if you, people always, you know, there are people who say, well, what's the best way to, you know, keep a customer is to give them a great experience. And that's based on how they feel. Um, I and feel I, welcome because sometimes I hear that people go to other events or other places and they don't feel welcome or they feel like it's messy or they feel... And I have not really heard that about our organization. If anything, I hear the opposite. Like, wow, this is really refreshing because there are this group of people that are always here, but they very much want to connect people in the room with other people. And they're very welcoming. So when I say feel, I'm talking about mm -hmm. feel on all levels. Yeah, it's, it's, and I've been to the events and it's different. It is, it has a special, you know, vibe that, that you can feel, you can feel it, you can experience it. Um, and then I, I, you know, my Angela has this quote that I love about this. Uh, and you think about what do you want to be? You want to be memorable to people. And, and her quote is, you know, I've learned that people forget what you said, people forget what you did, but people will never forget about how you made them feel. Yep. And I think that applies to business in ways that people forget. Um, because it's not, you know, it's, we're trying, I think businesses that are trying to make an impact even if it's driven by their bottom line, it's as you said, it's how they feel the motivation to do what they do. We talked about, you know, passion and having about, you know, having some heart in what you do and not just, it doesn't apply just to nonprofits. It doesn't just apply, you know, to personal things. It, it applies, if, if businesses learn this and the good ones do, that's I think a good way, you know, a really good element to be successful. And we talked about brands earlier, and I know you said sometimes people are quick to forget in business, but brands have been ruined by a one-time experience. I mean, there are people, you know, that- Yeah, they, make you, they don't remember how they made you feel if it's really And I'm not going to put anyone on blast here, because I know the airline industry is taking a real hit during this really challenging pandemic and epidemic, whatever you want to call it now at this point, because <laughs> there's another one coming. Um, but they're really understand. I mean, I'm not going to get into their challenges. I am trying to give them grace, but I have to say an experience I had back in March. I mean, this was a this was an airline that my husband and I would brag about to everyone, just like Costco were. But like, this is the one we would tell everyone this is the best one. And now it's like, I don't even want to ever even consider. And it's like terrible that one experience would make it that way. But that's, you know, brands are built over long periods of time. Loyalty is really hard to earn, but it is very quick to dissolve. And so yeah. I I think that that's scary, you know, when you think about it, especially when you're leading your own company, um, because, you know, everybody deserves a second chance to in some respect. But when you Unfortunately, like feeling being are, human, <laughs> feelings are deep and they're hard to change. So, well, the statistic I had heard once about that was that uh, if you have one bad brand experience, it takes 12 good ones to make up for it. Probably. So, 
the good news about that is don't give any make sure you work really hard to help give that great customer experience consistently to avoid that um yeah so important okay well i'm gonna end on a, on a what i think is a lighter note um depending on who you pick i guess um and ask you, you know, lots of animated characters tv films um and and I, I don't know if your daughter will influence you but can you name a favorite animated character oh my gosh talking about is this like a branding podcast right now like <laughs> you talk about disney i mean their company is the king and queen or whatever you want to call them of acknowledging past behavior and trying to you know i really think their evolution has been quite amazing and honestly mm. Their customer service is also incredible. So it's hard to pick a favorite animated character because all of their characters I'm like obsessed with. But um, I'm going to go with Belle because she was always mm. my favorite as a child. And um, she loves libraries she, and books. She likes to read books. And and she sings. And I think I just feel like I related to her a lot because that was my movie. So, like, yes, mm. I can talk about my daughter and the characters I love for her and the influence right. for her. But for me, at like 1997 or whatever came out, that was like when I was young enough to still be impressionable. And even though she still has a love story, which I know the princess game's getting some flack on Facebook right now about wanting a, needing a man all the time. But she was very independent because she turned down a man that wasn't right for her. It's not like she settled, right? So like she was very independent. She wanted to learn knowledge. She got criticized for it. She didn't care. She went after books. Like I just feel like maybe that was a little bit of where... I came from, I don't know, but I just, I always loved Belle, everything about her. I had a crush on her, so I don't know what that means, but, um, cause I love that movie as well. I thought it was just, you know. Have you seen the live action? I mean, I have, I have, I have like, not, um, but yeah, I know. I, I think I'll have to go and check it out. It's, good. Um, it's really good. But I've met Belle, you know, when I, I was a kid, okay. like not a kid, when I was a parent and I took my kids, my daughters met all the princesses and so. Yeah. But I, I did, I was, Bell, Bell holds a spot, spot for me as well, because I think, and I think what it is, is, yeah, she, she, she knows who she is. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that as a, as a female character, which is often not portrayed in that way. Um, I think she had qualities that was unique to a lot of the portrayals of women in, in animated or movies in general. I um, herself for her family. And I'm right. very family you know, I'm Italian, we're a very close family, very big, large family, and it is very much like we would sacrifice for our families. And so there's just a lot of things in, in Belle's character development that I really appreciated, especially as a young kid, and even more so now that I'm older. Yeah, and again, what's been nice, you know, I think of Mulan in terms of, you know, powerful female characters, but I think what's happening, we talked about diversity in general, you know, more and more, uh, my children's, you know, what they've been exposed to content wise has been wider, but it still could be pushed out a bit more and, um, and, but it's at least trending and hopefully in the right direction. Uh -huh. um, Nicole, this has been an absolute pleasure as I knew it would be. And, and you know, second time around is even better than the last time. Um, and I just want to thank you so much for sharing your time, sharing your insights. Thank you. Um, and uh, I really appreciate it. So thanks so much. Thanks to everyone who's there. I see some comments. Thank you much for yeah. those. And if you're watching this as a replay, enjoy. All right. That's us. We are out. Bye, Bye everyone.